Well, let's get a sense overall of how the market is handling this elevated geopolitical risk now. Joining us now, Rushir Sharma, chairman of Rockefeller International and breakout capital founder and CIO. He is the former head of emerging markets at Morgan Stanley Investment Management. Rashir, good to see you. Um, how much should we read into the fact that we didn't get a sell-off today? And where do the dollar and bond yields fit in from here? Well, for me, the real tell was what happened in the Middle Eastern markets itself. Uh, yesterday, they were open on Sunday and some of them today which is that most Middle Eastern markets were down only about 2%. Uh, so which is that here are these markets in the eye of the storm. The Israeli market was down close to 4%, but generally the Middle Eastern markets in the eye of the storm were only down a couple of percent, very different from what the news headlines would make us believe. So, and those markets, remember, many of those markets are dominated by local investors, and they have pretty good knowledge about what's happening on the ground. So that, for me, was the real tell, which is that it's being perceived so far as a localized conflict, as something the region is used to seeing. And however terrible uh, this tragedy may have been, but the tell from the markets was something which I think really set the base for what the U.S. market ended up doing today. Yeah, it is indeed terrible and ongoing. So broadly, most recently the New York Times, but uh, foreign policy, other publications recently have been talking about multipolarity, this idea that there's no longer one or two powers defining the action on the global stage, that deterrence don't work the way they used to. Perhaps what we're seeing in the Middle East now, the extremity of it is an example of that. Are there more risks that you see in this multipolar world? And what is the impact, you think, on investors? Well, first, having uh, seen these events for the last three decades, my uh, central belief here is that history is better remembered than it's lived, which is that we have always faced geopolitical risks. Even in the golden decade of the 1990s, I recall, uh, that there was this risk in the early 1990s that maybe the Soviet Union would launch a nuclear attack as a last gasp because it was disintegrating. Uh, so I feel that the geopolitical risk factor has always been there. It appears like a more fragmented world today, uh, but even in the 1990s or other times, we, uh, it resolved itself the right way, but it was a very uncertain time that we looked at. And then I was also looking back at the... Uh, instances of the last 50 years when you had major geopolitical uh, events uh, like you had over this weekend. And on average, what you see is a 5% decline in the markets uh, as a knee-jerk reaction to what happens. And then uh, on average, the markets recover the entire losses within two months. So I'd say that the world is used to living, at least the markets and investors are used to living with geopolitical risk Maybe it's gone up a bit because we have uh, U.S. and China, that conflict out there. Mm. But as I said, that history is better remembered than it's lived. So we have lived through the entire 2000s with the fear of terrorism after 9-11. Uh, and nine out of 10 times, these worst fears do not materialize. Yeah. And so the markets, I think, are better not focusing too much on geopolitics and returning to focusing on the economy and the Fed. I do wonder, though, Rashir, what the potential impact is to the economy. And we, we, have, we have a near global fight against inflation uh, with central banks raising rates and looking to get that under control. And as Strategas uh, sort of highlighted in a recent note, you know, this, this kind of just speaks to this broader theme of deglobalization that's afoot. And in general, when you do see conflicts, they do tend to be inflationary. So how does this factor back into that global economic outlook and that fight against higher prices? Oh, yes, I completely believe in that, which is that I've been a big believer in deglobalization and written about it extensively for the last decade or so. So that's an ongoing process. And the margin, that's inflationary. That's very true. But even in the oil markets, in terms of what we are seeing, I think there are other factors at work here. The other factor I've spoken a lot about has been greenflation, which is that we have Titan supplies so much for uh, some of these key um, materials and um, the Brent price uh, is such, reflects that, that you see the oil price, the markets are very tight out there because supply has been so materially constrained. So I think deglobalization, greenflation, 
These are all themes which I think at the margin are inflationary in nature and why I expect inflation to be higher this decade, uh, possibly closer to 3% on, on an underlying basis rather than the 1.5%, 2% we have seen um, for much of the last couple of decades. I wonder what all of this means for the dollar. I mean, you've come on and, and you've talked to us about the fact that maybe we're, uh, you know, we've already seen, the peak is already in, in for the dollar and that we're, we're opening a new chapter on, on a weakening for the greenback. Does this change any of that? No, I don't think so. I think that, in fact, what I'm concerned about is this, which is that, yes, the dollar has rallied back over the last few weeks on the back of higher U.S. yields. Uh, but the U.S. deficit is so much larger than what any country in the world today is running. The U.S. is running a deficit, as we now well know, of close to 6% of GDP. Uh, the other developed countries are running a deficit to GDP, which is not even half that uh, on average. So I think at some point in time, foreigners are going to tire of funding the U.S. deficit. And I know this takes a while to play itself out and with problems in Europe and China, the U.S. still looks uh, a relatively better place to park your capital. But at some point in time, and it could be sooner than we expect, I think the foreigners are going to tire of funding this very large deficit. And I think that's what's going to be a major issue for the U.S. dollar this decade. Yeah. And of course, this has been part of the bear case for uh, long term U.S. treasuries uh, and, and U.S. debt as well. And part of the reason perhaps we've seen in this tidal wave of issuance um, multi-decade highs for things like uh, the 10 year yield. Rishir Sharma, thanks so yeah. much. Great to start the hour with you and get your insights. Thank you.